It was a traveling exhibit for school children, titled, quote, Population, the Problem is Us, end quote. It toured the country at government expense in the mid-1970s. It consisted of a set of illustrated panels with an accompanying script that stated, There are too many people in the world. We are running out of space. We are running out of energy. We are running out of food. And, although too few people seem to realize it, we are running out of time. It told the children that, quote, the birth rate must decrease and or the death rate must increase, end quote, since resources were all but exhausted and mass starvation loomed. It warned that, quote, driven by starvation, people have been known to eat dogs, cats, bird droppings, and even their own children, end quote. And it featured a picture of a dead rat on a dinner plate as an example of future, quote, food sources, end quote. Overpopulation, it threatened, would lead not only to starvation and cannibalism, but to civil violence and nuclear war. The exhibit was created at the Smithsonian Institution, the National Museum of the U.S. Government, using federal funds provided by the National Science Foundation, an agency of the U.S. Government. Concurrently, other American school children were also being treated to federally funded, quote, population education, end quote, instructing them on, quote, the growing pressures on global resources, food, jobs, and political stability, end quote. They read Paul Ehrlich's book, The Population Bomb. They were taught falsely that, quote, world population is increasing at a rate of 2% per year, whereas the food supply is increasing at a rate of 1% per year, end quote, and equally falsely that, quote, population growth and rising affluence have reduced reserves of the world's minerals, end quote. They viewed slides of the, quote, biological catastrophes, end quote, that would result from overpopulation and held class discussions on, quote, what responsible individuals in a crowded world should or can do about population growth, end quote. They learned that the world is like a spaceship or a crowded lifeboat to deduce the fate of mankind which faces a, quote, population crisis, end quote. And then, closer to home, they learned that families who have children are adding to the problems of overpopulation, and besides, children are a costly burden who, quote, need attention 24 hours a day, end quote, and spoil marriages by making their fathers, quote, jealous, end quote, and rendering their mothers, quote, depleted, end quote. They were told to, quote, say goodbye, end quote, to numerous wildlife species doomed to extinction as a result of the human population explosion. This propaganda campaign in the public schools, which indoctrinated a generation of children, was federally funded despite the fact that no law had committed the United States to this policy, nor, indeed, had agreement been reached among informed groups that the problem of, quote, overpopulation, end quote, even existed. To the contrary, during the same period, the government drive against population was gaining momentum. Contrary evidence was proliferating. One of the world's most prominent economic demographers, Colin Clark of Oxford University, published a book titled Population Growth, The Advantages, and economists Peter Bauer and Basil Yamey of the London School of Economics discovered that the population scare, quote, relies on misleading statistics, misunderstands the determinants of economic progress, misinterprets the causalities and changes in fertility and changes in income, end quote, and, quote, envisages children exclusively as burdens, end quote. Moreover, in his major study of the economics of population growth, Julian Simon found that population growth was economically beneficial. Other economists joined in differing from the official antinatalist position. Commenting on this body of economic findings, Paul Ehrlich, the biologist author of The Population Bomb, charged that economists, quote, continue to whisper in the ears of politicians all kinds of nonsense, end quote. If not on the side of the angels, Ehrlich certainly found himself on the side of the U.S. government, which since the mid-1960s has become increasingly committed to a worldwide drive to reduce the growth of population. It has absorbed rapidly increasing amounts of public money, as well as the energies of a growing number of public agencies and publicly subsidized private organizations.